giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. See, then we're going to hop into the match I'm going to be talking about today, which is the first quarterfinal match between the second and seventh alliances at the Durham College District event up in Ontario. Um, well, I mean, technically, this is the second match they played because they had to replay quarterfinal 3 1. Um, so these alliances had already seen each other and played together, but this is the first one that counted. Uh, this is one of the rare upsets. Up, uh, one of the rare upsets we've seen in the first week of Destination Deep Space. Uh, most uh, alliances, most events have been won by the one or two seed. Most one through four make semis, et cetera, et cetera. So here we see um, the impact defense could have on this game through this number seven seed. Uh, so I'm going to quickly set the scene. Our number two alliance is 5885, the Villanova Wired Cats. Uh, they seeded third due to a consistent level three climb. Uh, they only did low hatches, so they needed that versatility with their first pick, which led to them picking 188 Blizzard, your OG Canadians, um, who were a versatile hatch and uh, cargo bot could score, I believe, on all three levels. Not that they do it in this match, but uh, so they got that versatility. Rounding out their alliance was 7267, the Lizgar Robotics Club. Uh, so they went up against the number seven alliance, uh, captain by 4476, the Waffles, uh, who had made their ranking through quick cargo cycles uh, driven by the robot is I've seen argued as one of the best drivers in FRC right now. Uh, 6867 was their first te- uh, pick Pantera tech. Uh, they were a hatch only robot with a level two hab climb. Uh, and then their final robot was 4525 Renaissance robotics and uh, 4476 is strategy mentor uh, Tegan, one of our contributors here on fun told me when I asked her about it, she said they were the best defense bot at the event by miles. Uh, they, they actually were planning, they would have declined captains three through six so that they knew they would be able to get 45-25. Like, that's how much they valued this robot and the defense they could bring. Uh, so they were they were prepared to, if they, after that, uh, uh, after two pick, they were going to decline the rest of the way if they got picked uh, just to get 45-25. Hey, P- um, so PJ... That- I, yes. I'm just going to ask your opinion on something, I, and you're not going to be able to hear this because we can't we can't let our hosts hear we're playing. But every time I th- hear waffles, I think back to like old Family Guy, and you yeah. guys remember like the scene where they're like the dude gets hit by a golf ball, and then he like tells everybody to buy waffle stocks, like to invest in waffles. Oh like, yeah, 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 tasty yeah. waffles. Yeah, going to be lowering rates, so get your money out we'll of the bills and put it all in <laughs> waffles. tasty waffles with lots of syrup. But yeah, so waffles, waffles which is an acronym, actually, that I have no idea what it stands for. Fun right. fact. Yeah, me neither, PJ. <laughs> yeah, it's like an eight-letter acronym. So, all right, so now we're going to hop into the match now that Tyler's had his fun. So, uh, we start in the sandstorm. We've got... Uh, both alliances start in the same configuration, two up on level two of the HAB, one down on level one. I got to interject real quick, PJ. Yeah. I don't understand why every alliance isn't doing that. Like, there's so many. Yeah. Like, it's three points for every robot that you don't put up on level two. I just don't get it. Sorry, I just got to yeah. say that out loud. Like, I don't, if, if your robot can't drive off level two, like, you need to, like, secure some stuff on that robot because yeah. it's not that big of, it's not that big to, you know, Zip it's not ties. that big of I mean, a you, This is pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so yeah. But so anyway, both start- sorry, sorry. Carry on. Sorry to <laughs> cut in on you there, but I think that's an important PSA that needs to be put out there. Like you're yeah. missing points. You know? Yeah. So uh, so we both start two up, one down. Uh, on blue, we see during sandstorm, forty four seventy six scores the end hatch on the cargo ship, and their lines part sixty eight sixty seven scores on the side because they left uh, one of the null hatches open, and uh, so they score those two hatches and effectively two cargo during sandstorm. On red, only fifty eight eighty five scores a hatch. Uh, plus their cargo. Uh, so we're going to pause here at about 125. And at 125 seconds, this is where 188 finally scores their preloaded hatch because uh, after Sandstorm ended, uh, Renaissance immediately ran over and started playing defense on them. Uh, so at this time where 188 scores their first preloaded hatch, 4476 has already scored a cargo and 6867 has already scored another hatch. So we can see where we've already got this going. Uh, this does the score does remain close for now, um, and so now we're going to let it roll to about 112 seconds. And we see, you know, we see blue, uh, we see Renaissance up top just hammering 188, not letting them get these cycles that they wanted to do. We see red maintaining a full auto uh, strategy. 
So at 112 seconds, we see 4476 scores a cargo in a bay that they have already scored a cargo in. This is, I want to point this out because this was a very <laughs> common mistake this week. I saw it happen a lot because the sight lines on this field, we've known all year, right, that the sight lines are awful um, and that they're going to, and it made it very hard to see. So if you were not the one who scored that cargo, a lot of teams would not realize that one of their alliance partners had scored a cargo or that it's had, some of them forgot they scored that cargo. Um, this was actually the preloaded cargo that um, their alliance partner had scored that hatch over during Sandstorm, you'll remember. Um, so this is just something like a PSA to drive coaches. You know, you need to be aware even more so in past years. You need to be watching that entire field. Uh, so you know where your alliance partners are scoring, so you know where the opponents are scoring because – your drivers can't focus on that because they're focusing on their row. As a drive coach, I would say this is, you know, this is your job to sort of be watching this whole field so you know where things have been scored. Real quick on that, PJ, you've been to an event now. I haven't been to one yet. If you run all the way down to like one uh, right or left side of the driver station and look through the side, can a coach see if there's a cargo scored in there or is it really hard to see? Like, I don't I, I don't know. So I'm just uh, I'm just curious if you took a look at that while you were there. Or, they they probably have. Uh, looks like Jet, our friend from 2928, uh, says you can sometimes see it from the driver's station depending on the side. Okay. So, it, like I said, I was never – I mean, I was refing. I wasn't behind the glass. Uh, so it's – but it's definitely hard, and I can see why people did this. So it's just something that, like I said, it keeps mm-hmm. aware. Because those – when we get to this final score, you'll see those two – you know, those points could make a huge difference. Uh, so now we're going to roll till about 94 seconds. Um, as we see, you know, Renaissance just keeps over there on 188. They're playing man-to-man defense on 188. They stick to 188 wherever wherever Blizzard's going, they're going. Um, so, and the Waffles just keep scoring these cycles. And then over here, we see they cross the center line at 94, or maybe another second. See, we see them cross that center line. This is ah. another issue with sight lines. Ah. Like, this is... As a ref, this was one of the most common fouls because you're going to get that far cargo or that far hatch and you don't realize you're crossing into your opponent's territory while your uh, alliance partner is playing defense. And so you'll see it get flagged by um, one of our uh, fun contributors is the head ref over there. Uh, Mr. One Mr. Praneet uh, flags this one for the, uh, the center line auto. And once again, that's three points, which sounds low compared to penalties in past games, but... It's if a you ball. Watch, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, ball. it's so bad, PJ. You know yeah. that, that that there's so many of these this weekend. Between that penalty and then people scoring balls inside the null hatches that have already had a ball on them, you yeah. know, it's just kind of it. it, it, it those are going to be two of the things that are big on communication this year. Like everyone's kind of getting used to it here in week one. As we go on, people are going to get better about this, but those seem to be two of the biggest gotchas that we're finding here. Yeah. And then uh, Tyler paused it right at 75 because what's going to come next in this? As you see, there's the, there's a great – they switched the camera view just in time for you to see a great shot of 45-25 just blasting 188. So if we roll that, uh, you'll see them just – it'll the camera switch. You just blast and They just knock that hatch right out of their gatherer. Um, so they just – it's – I don't think that's a huge – because it's not only do they – are they do they prevent them from scoring that piece. They've now dropped it, and they don't have a, they don't have a ground pickup. So they're forced to go back and run another cycle because of that hit. Um, so we're going to roll in about 60 seconds. We're going to see Renaissance drop their intake uh, on the opponent's side of the field, uh, which is going to earn Blue their second foul of the match, which that was another one. Like, you just see it. I don't know if it was, you know, it's just one of those things, and then you're outside the frame perimeter on your opponent's side of the field, and you get called. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then at 50 seconds, we see uh, here we see Villanova scoring a hatch panel on their near rocket. Great. But with 45-25 Renaissance playing defense on the other side of the field, this is where we see what sort of Tyler was talking about with 29-28's team. Red isn't able to adapt. Like, uh, like Villanova is low hatches only. That's all they can do. And they've scored them all on that side of the field. They have no options left to score except to go and climb. And that is... There's still 50 seconds left in the match. That's a lot of cycles that they're losing out on. Granted, there's only two more places for them to score with the way their robot is built, but that's still six points. No, sorry, four points because they're hatches. Um, so we'll see. We'll roll this match till about uh, for the next 15 or so seconds. You know, we see, as I said, we see Villanova go. Teams are continuing the cycle. 
This is a close match this whole way through. At about 35 seconds, we're going to see both alliances within a second of each other finish their cargo ships. Um, and uh, an important thing, this is, this is how close this match is. Is at 30 seconds, we're about to see uh, the head ref start a pin count as Renaissance holds 188. Uh, so if we roll that, you know, we can see him start uh, the pin count. It'll be at about 30 seconds. So he goes one, two, three, four, four and a half, and then he waves it. So they peel, like, Renaissance holds them there just long enough, peels off just in time. His hand is up to start that fifth chop, and when he, once that hand comes down, that's a foul. So, and so this ends up, this saves the match for Blue. Um, so they held them there. They held them down there as long as they could. And now 188 has to run over and rush their level two climb. So we'll roll this through, um, through to the end of the match at this point. So we see 188 going. They seem to have issues uh, popping up. Only one side seems to deploy correctly because uh, it looks like they have two kinds of stilts. They go again. We see 5885 has already finished their climb. There's 15 seconds left in the match. Like, that's two cycles for them. And so we end the match, and we see that blue, en- no, sorry, red ends with two level ones and a level three, and blue ends with two level twos and a level one. So in this match, 4525 held 188 to just five cycles that match. Uh, and one of those was their preloaded hatch. Defense also indirectly limited 5885 to four cycles as they had they had the opposite rocket locked down. Uh, and then our final score, if we roll it, because it'll pop up in a second, what, this is what I say when this penalty decided, like the fact that... Oh, it won't. Never mind. Tyler didn't clip it far enough. I was, But the final score ends up being 80 for blue, 78 for red. So this is a three-point match. So yeah, the final score, you can see, that's what ends up being the final score. And so if that penalty would have been called, Red wins this match. If, like, there's so many close calls in this match. Like, this is a perfectly executed match um, for Blue. And e- Actually, I shouldn't even say it's perfectly because they earned two fouls along the way. It's a, like, they had to lock this in. Uh, and it was just, it was such a tight match and it was just amazing that it was that close and that literally as I was watching it I'm watching him uh, do that I was watching him do the count I saw that it got to four and a half and then he waved it safe PJ but, can, I, can I just ask you here like I feel like anytime I see a pin count it's like watching the WWE that it's yeah. like it's always like <laughs> right before three they roll out or something like that and it's yeah. like, like as you as a referee like, mm-hmm. I mean, are you literally just going, the, like, the five straight, or do you give a little bit of leeway if it's really close or something like that? I don't know if I'm allowed to answer that question. No, <laughs> uh, I I personally try to hit my five consistently um, because that's just I, – I can't say whether it's unintentionally or not. Maybe some people are doing that. But I try to hit my five. I am also a little bit more lenient on – what I consider a pin than some like different areas call what is a pin a little bit differently. Um, the, one of the first head refs I ever worked with was a referee who also refs hockey. And so his defense, his definition of defense was a little bit looser than a lot of other referees. So it was very influential on me. So I, if I, if I see like it's so some people start a pin count much quicker than others and mine, I'm, I'm a little, little liberal, I guess it would no conservative in this case. I'm a little conservative when it comes to starting my pin count. So, but then I try to keep it consistent once I start it. Yeah, it's like all these subjective rules, right, PJ? You just got to know the person that you're uh, that's doing the uh, the analysis slash decision making that's going on there, and just gotta you know cater to that at that any given time. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, we wish it was more cut and dry, but it's not. Okay, so I've got a couple questions and comments from chat that we're gonna get through real fast. Uh, from Red Leader 342, he said a lot of teams at Palmetto were having CAN bus or radio issues when driving off level two in response to why mm, you don't gotcha. put teams up there. Yeah, uh, you should hot glue your uh, electrical <laughs> in place. Yeah. Uh, from Tegan4476, who is uh, the Waffle Strategy Mentor, also a lovely one of our lovely fun contributors and my smallest bean. Uh, I guess for that second cargo, it says it was driver error. He didn't line it up properly. Uh, I guess in the first match, it happened to get it. It was drive coach error. Mm. So I blame you, Brennan. Uh, from Jake Lowton, 34, uh, he says it was brutal for sight lines as a driver in the middle station. 
As a driver for 2200, while playing with other good cargo scoring robots, my drive coach would have to run from side to side to tell me where to score. Not uh, surprised. Yeah, 2200, another great Canadian team who seeded first and actually won uh, the Durham event. And then finally from the Big Tank 1, as a drive coach for 4783 uh, in the center station, you know, you could not see any obstructions that might prevent climb on level 3. That's true. I did see mm-hmm. that too uh, in some climbs where teams would get caught on a cargo that had rolled in front of it because you can't see it's there. So, but yeah. I know. It, it, it almost comes to maybe you just got to stick a camera on the front of your robot, something to know what's in front of your face. Yeah. You know? Or it looked down a little bit. I don't know. You know, uh, people will figure out how to do it. They always figure out how to do it. Yeah. As, as, you know, somebody in the chat I saw mentioned a camera. Like, mm-hmm. that's great, but some teams lack resources or knowledge of how. So, um, that's why you, you to listen camera, to things like Finalysis, and we can help you figure out what you need to do. Yeah. Thank you to all of our co executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.